Protein misfolding and aggregation has emerged as the cause of numerous diseases, including neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and Huntington's disease. Interestingly, in all these disorders, the formation of fibrillar or amyloid-like aggregates by the disease protein is associated with a toxic gain of function. But the mechanism of aggregate toxicity has remained unclear. One prominent hypothesis suggests that the aggregates or their intermediate states are sticky and engage in aberrant interactions with multiple other cellular proteins resulting in their sequestration and functional impairment. In this study, we have tested the hypothesis of co-aggregation by quantitative proteomics. We used model proteins that were designed to form beta sheet fibrils. These proteins were developed by our collaborator Michael Hecht from Princeton. They are based on the redundant structural pattern of beta strands, the sequence of polar and apolar amino acid residues. We chose these artificial proteins because they have no evolved biological function and thus allowed us to study aggregate toxicity without interference from loss of function effects that one often observes with natural disease proteins. Let's see what we found with these proteins when we express them in human cells. In order to investigate the beta aggregation toxicity, we selected three of the artificial proteins called beta-4, beta-17 and beta-23 and we expressed them transiently in hec 293 t cells. The beta protein expressing cells adopted a collapsed shape with a disturbed actin cytoskeleton. Aggregates accumulated mostly in the perinuclear space, here seen for beta-23, and the nuclei were often deformed. The aggregates were also found to be positive for amyloid staining dyes and they reduced cell viability substantially. Cell viability measured by MTT assay showed increasing cytotoxicity from beta-4 to beta-23 while an alpha helical control protein, indicated by the green bar, was not toxic. To analyze whether the aggregates interacted with endogenous proteins, we established an immunoisolation procedure followed by proteomic analysis. We performed our proteomic analysis uh, using uh, SILAC. In this method, cells are allowed to incorporate isotopically labeled amino acids into their proteins, and this facilitates uh, quantification by mass spectrometry. For example, unlabeled conchal cells were mixed with medium isotope labeled cells expressing the alpha helical protein and with heavy isotope labeled cells expressing beta-23. Immunoprecipitation, followed by mass spectrometry, identified approximately 100 cellular proteins to be associated with the beta-23 aggregates. The interactors are located in the cytosol, nucleus and mitochondria, suggesting multifunctional impairment. For example, a number of translation initiation factors were sequestered in the aggregates, resulting in impaired protein synthesis. The aggregates also contain several molecular chaperones, such as HSP70 and its cofactors. Pulse labeling experiments uh, revealed that proteins co-aggregated as uh, pre-existent or newly synthesized proteins. The pre-existent proteins are large in size, have low hydrophobicity, and are enriched in disordered regions. These are structural properties that correlate strongly with multifunctionality in the protein network. The newly synthesized proteins are also large, but show average hydrophobicity and disorder. They presumably interact with the aggregates before completing their folding or assembly. Chaperones interact with the aggregates to shield their sticky surfaces, but apparently the available chaperone capacity is insufficient to prevent co-aggregation. In summary, we suggest that widespread co-aggregation of endogenous proteins leads to the impairment of multiple essential functions. The proteins at risk to co-aggregation have certain structural properties in common. This mechanism of aggregate toxicity could be generally relevant in disease.